Thanks, David, and welcome everyone to the call this morning. I'm very conscious there's a lot of lot of reporting happening uh, this time of year, so we might uh, we might get stuck straight into it. But you know, today's a really positive day, and we're really looking forward to the communication we're about to have. I always like to start with a little bit about us, particularly for those newer investors. So if we start on slide two, who are we? We're an engineering-led specialist asset services, mining services and construction group, and that's engineering mindset that we bring to everything that we do is part of our core DNA. What do we do? We solve complex problems across the entire asset life cycle of engineer, construct and sustain and have a real skill with complexity. Now, what we want to be, our vision, is the most sought after in our fields of expertise so that when customers have a problem, a challenge, an opportunity, the first people they think of are SRG Global. Before I get into the review, I really just want to pause for a moment and acknowledge our team, our business and our people. Um, you know, they continue to step up against what is a really challenging operating environment over the last couple of years. You know, culturally, we've really come together and our people live and breathe what we stand for as a company. Live for the challenge, smile together, never give up and have each other's backs. And I really want to acknowledge our people rolling up their sleeves. I'm proud to be a part of this business and I'm proud of the way that we've come to, together to keep achieving and delivering. So if we move to slide four, which is our executive summary. And I think what you see here is evidence, evidence of us continuing to deliver. If we look at the first few financials, revenue up 5%, EBITDA up 32% and EBITDA up 69%. But to me, it's the quality of the business and the quality of the revenue. In the first half last year, we exited some non-core businesses. And what you're really seeing there is evidence of, of the translation of that into better quality revenue and, and higher earnings. That translated into an impact of 102% uplift, which is terrific as well. If we move down the table um, to the margin area, this is one I'm you know, particularly pleased with. EBITDA margin up 26% uh, to 9.1%, EBITDA up 64% to 5.4%, and NPADA up 100% to 3.4%. I mean, really, you know, this is a really pleasing result in terms of the further evidence of the quality of the business, the earnings that we're now achieving, and the margins that we're now making. And look, there's no doubt we think there's further chance to optimise that as we move forward, but it's certainly moving in the right direction. And what that has allowed us to do is to increase our interim fully frank dividend to 1.5 cents per share, which is a 50% uplift um, on the first half last year. And it's something that really, you know, we are a growth stock or a dividend paying stock, and we think you can bounce that and you're seeing clear evidence of that. And that's really off the back of what I think is the key highlight of our first half result is the improvement in net cash by 432% to 28.2 million. This is a terrific achievement because we've continued to invest in the growth of our business and we've continued to deliver dividends and yield to our shareholders. And it's something that's been a huge focus for us as a business and one that I'll touch on further in the presentation. We exceeded consensus for our first half EBITDA performance. We've got terrific high quality work in, work in hand of approximately a billion dollars and a good opportunity pipeline of, of six billion plus. We're well funded for growth and I'll touch on that further in the presentation and I'm pleased today to communicate that our FY22 EBITDA guidance is upgraded to a range of 54 to 57 million which really I think highlights the confidence that both myself and the board have in the future direction of the business. But we're not here today to pat ourselves on the back and we're not satisfied in our view we're just getting started in terms of where we plan to take this business moving forward into the future. And it's really off the back as we move to slide five, our performance of demonstration and evidence of us executing the growth phase of our strategy. We are doing everything we said we would do. We've had a very clear strategy in place for a very long time. And what you're seeing today is clear evidence of us delivering against that strategy. The whole growth phase was around transitioning the business mix towards annuity recurring earnings. And in that growth phase, you'll see a lot of evidence today of the ticks in terms of step change growth in recurring asset services, innovation and selective growth in mining services, targeted growth in special civil infrastructure construction and specialist services and products in building construction 
with key repeat clients. And you'll see the evidence of us transitioning to two thirds, one third in terms of annuity earnings versus project based earnings. We move to slide six, and I really want to pause on this slide. This is a very important slide to really highlight the strategic transformation that we've made as a company in the past few years. In 2018, that's 70 per cent of our earnings for project based earnings and 30 per cent annuity. You know, where we are today is almost the complete reverse of that. Why is that important? It's, it's important because what it brings, it brings certainty, predictability, it lowers the risk profile, it gives us a very balanced business. If you're a pure construction company, you can feel the need to keep feeding the beast. You've got to keep chasing more and more work all the time. Whereas the, the balance business we've now transitioned to, we have a two thirds underlying foundation. We can then be very targeted on the good construction projects side of the business that suit our skill set and our commercial framework. It's not easy to make this transition. Um, like, there were certainly many skeptics when I communicated this strategy back in 2018 in terms of where we wanted to take this business. A lot of companies talk about we're going to go to annuity earnings. But what you're seeing today is the evidence of that transformation. And that's a transformation that's been done against a very, very difficult backdrop in the last couple of years. And I think it's a testament to our culture, but most importantly, it's a testament to our people have really come together as a team to keep driving this business forward and have really bought into the vision about what we want to be as a company, both from a financial perspective, but more importantly, from a cultural perspective. So I'm particularly pleased with where we've transformed to today. It's an outstanding result. And what's that translated to in, as we get moved to slide seven is that strategy, that transformation is delivering continued earnings growth. You can see the positive trend on these graphs. We expect that trend to continue as we grow further into the future over the next three to four years. If you're wanting a bit of a feel for sort of first half, second half splits, you know, we would generally about 45 first half, 55 second half is what we generally are um, as a company. And, and we expect that earnings growth to continue into the second half and continue over the next three to five years organically with the same positive trends. But not only is the strategy delivering continued earnings growth, as we move to slide eight, it's delivering increased cash and dividends. And I think as I said at the early on in this presentation, this, you know, the, the movement of cash has been a real standout performance of us. If you look at our history and transition from net debt to net cash over the last couple of years, it's a terrific result. I and mean, this is a $40 million swing in that period. And that's despite making the continued investment in the growth of our company, along with continuing to deliver dividends to shareholders, which is a really good segue to the second graph on that slide. It gives you the history and trajectory of our fully frank dividends. You can see the growth, our dividends are up 50% um, against the first half last year to one and a half cents. It's a really positive trend. You know, we are throwing off excellent yields. I think you know, a yield of circa 6% fully frank, you know, higher if you, if you gross it up. I mean, these are terrific yields for business. It is a growth business as well. And we certainly plan to continue being that growth business and a good dividend paying stock. I think for me, what we have strategically, and as you can now see financially, really terrific platform and fundamentals in terms of taking the business into the next stage of our evolution and growth. But as we move, move to slide nine, it's also underpinned by a really strong foundation, both from a cultural perspective, but more importantly, from a people perspective. And it's our people that are driving this result. And if you look at slide nine, it's firstly starting with our zero harm improvement. You show me a business that's improving from a safety perspective, and I, and I know the financials will reflect that. And, and we've, you know, this business has continued to make really good strides forward from a zero harm perspective. I always call it the glass ball. I don't really like to celebrate, it's a glass ball that you can never afford to drop. And it's, it's something that's an ongoing focus for us, but we are making really good strides forward. And that's despite having a growing workforce. Now this time, 12 months ago, we had about 1,800 people. We've now got 2,300 people. So not only is it, is it a terrific safety performance, but it's also you know, a real testament that we are 
growing from a workforce perspective. We're attracting really good talent. We're, we're retaining really good talent. And we're, you know, in my mind, an employee proposi value proposition that people are attracted to come to SRG. They can see the strategy. They can see the vision. They can see the culture. They can see the level of tenure we've got in contracts moving forward, and they want to be a part of it. Uh, Labor is a really hot topic um, in the broader market, and, and whilst it's something in pockets we're, we're managing, um, you know, we're, we're doing a really good job attracting and retaining um, key talent. Diversity comes in many forms. We've chosen to highlight gender diversity um, in this half, and you can see from a corporate perspective, quite even split between male and female um, from a corporate perspective. Operationally, you know, traditionally operate in sectors and industries that are far more from a male dominated from a blue collar perspective. You know, we're looking for new and innovative ways to attract more female um, employees into the blue collar workforce, and, and that's very much um, work in progress. You know, we have made some good strides forward in terms of bringing not only new skills but further diversity onto both the board and the executive um, in, in the last period, and it's something that I know is a particular focus for the board. From a community engagement perspective, and we do a lot of work with our local communities around training, development, traineeships, apprenticeships. Um, you know, I'm particularly proud of uh, Abagaba um, Indigenous Joint Venture, and I'll touch on that a little bit um, a little bit later. It's a scaffolding services joint venture. I think it's the first of its kind um, in Australia, and I'll touch on that a little bit later on. But you know, doing a lot of good work with our communities, not just from a sponsorship perspective, but really investing in developing um, and, and providing work opportunities. From a geographic diversity perspective, really want to highlight this, just, just to really highlight the, I guess, the, the 30 plus years of global experience that we have. We have a very broad um, platform on which we play. Um, you know, in recent times, we've really pared back the, um, the international focus given the, given the pandemic. But this particular map really highlights where we have experience globally. And the way we're structured today is, is having that sort of engineering hub in Australia and New Zealand and really leapfrogging to do different types of projects or contracts internationally. And look, the, the reason I'll highlight this is that market will open up for us as we move into the future with you know, borders now opening up internationally and you know, more importantly without um, being too controversial here, here in the West uh, as well. So you know, I think that's something that our geographic diversity really gives us that broad platform and, and in some ways a natural hedge in terms of, a dis, of different economies and geography cycle. You know, we, we've got a natural hedge on where we can play. From a corporate governance perspective, I know this has been a huge focus um, for the board. You know, we've really looked at um, our, our governance and continue to focus on that. We've gone for a whole refresh of our policies, you know, focusing on areas such as supply chain, sustainability, modern slavery, you know, respected SRG Global. And we've recently launched our first wrap, our reconciliation action plan. And you know, there's a lot of good stuff we're doing um, from a governance perspective. I know that's a um, a particular focus of the board. And I think what you can see on the strong foundation we have from a cultural and people um, perspective is that not only is the strategy clear and solid, the financials are clear and solid, but the culture and people and the foundation is clear and solid. And, and why that's particularly important is we're about to embark on the next evolution and growth of our business. You know, the, the foundations are there to really take this business moving forward. I want to switch gears a little bit now and just go more into the financial um, overview. And if we move to slide 11, I've touched on quite a few of the financials in the summary, and slide 11 really breaks it down more into the into the three operating segments of asset services, mining services, and, and construction. And what I really want to focus on this slide is our margin. You can see from an overall EBITDA margin perspective, it's up from 7.2% in the first half last year to 9.1%. And I think if Roger might correct me here, but I think it was 8.3% in the second half of last year. So you can, you can see the, the positive trajectory um, from a margin perspective. And we, we think there's good opportunity to optimise that further as we move into, into the future. If I break down the different operating segments, firstly starting with, with asset services, EBITDA margins of 11.5%. I mean, that's a really solid um, performance. What is a capital light um, business? And I think it's one that you know, I've been asked questions. We've, we've won a lot of long-term contracts over the last 12 to 18 months, are we buying work? And I think what you're seeing here is clear, but clear evidence. We're not buying work. We're winning it because we're a smart, technical, engineering-led um, business, and we have a point of difference. From a mining services perspective, you know, traditionally margins have operated EBITDA, from an EBITDA perspective in excess of 20, and we're consistently delivering um, against that, and you know, it's been a real standout performer 
um, for us again on the construction side of the business you know you, what you're seeing here is a good trend in margins improving as we sort of focus on more higher quality work with key clients that we've had a long-term history with with skill sets um, where we're the most sought after and we expect that margin percentage to continue to improve from a corporate perspective you know it's sort of circa 2.4 percent of, of revenue and look i will touch on this one for a moment well, we've really invested in this business in terms of really brought on a board executive management with experience of running much larger businesses and, and i guess for, for us taking our business to where we want it to be in the future we've really invested um, in that and and you know what you're really seeing today is starting to get some leverage of that but there is still a lot more opportunity to leverage that corporate overhead further given the sort of experience and capability we have um, at those particular those particular levels a lot of good work happening and from a systems perspective and really investing on, from a systems perspective not for the company that we are today but for the company that we want to be into the future and we, as we move to slide 12 you know excellent cash generation I've, I've touched on this already but i will keep uh, i will keep repeating it i know there's a lot of uh, there'll be a lot of srg people on this call and we, we always keep talking about cash so i'll never miss miss an opportunity but what you're seeing here is an ebitda to cash conversion of 131 percent I mean, that's that's terrific it's been a huge focus of the business and it was probably one of the benefits of the pandemic in the early phases of it really um, heightened the awareness and importance of not just profit but cash and, and we really drove that deep within the business and i think it's now become very cultural for us in terms of the driving of the cash uh, and cash performance and this is a terrific achievement you know i guess the the waterfall here shows we keep investing in the growth in our business we keep investing in shareholders from a dividend perspective but that even out of cash conversion is a terrific um, a terrific performance and i'm really pleased with the sort of positive trends we have in the way we're generating our cash and what that leads to on slide 13 is a really robust financial position um, you know we've really focused on this to ensure that we are bullet, bulletproof regardless of the situation we face ourselves really good available liquidity you know we're net cash of 28.2 million we'll keep investing in growth but we want to be a net cash business um, if you look at our debt you know the lion's share of our debt is equipment finance debt and what you can see there is we have plenty of capacity from funding perspective to grow this business into the future I'll switch gears again and sort of more move into the operating segment slot starting on um, slide 15 and that's probably you know, perhaps a little bit more exciting for those with more, a more engineering mindset I'll start with our asset services business on slide 15 which is our specialist maintenance and access services um, business if there's one key takeaway from slide 15 it's the quality of the client base I just want to read some names to you Rio Tinto, Fortescue, South 32, Alcoa, Roy Hill, Adelaide Brighton, Aluka, Liberty, Manara, Vizi, Fonterra, Pilbara Ports, Yarra, Todd Energy. None of these clients existed three years ago for asset services. 70% of these clients we didn't have three years ago. This has been a huge transformation for us as a company. It's clear evidence of, of the quality of the clients that are buying in to the SRG story and what we can offer. The whole strategy around step change growth in asset services you're seeing clear evidence of that but what this client base provides us is an enormous platform and opportunity to bring all aspects of srg global um, and add value to their business we move to slide 16 the first half in review you know, good mobilization operational delivery i think if there's a key takeaway from this you can see the clear evidence evidence of us continuing to win long-term contracts um, with new clients you know, we've, we've successfully expanded into the Gladstone region we've got now more than 100 people um, in, in Gladstone and what you're seeing now is a very broad asset services business with a, with a key presence in Western Australia South Australia Queensland and New Zealand and a smattering in New South Wales and Victoria and that's, that's certainly you know, a good opportunity to grow that and expand that business geographically a really good pipeline of opportunities but particularly what excites me the most is the expansion opportunities with existing clients not only with winning new contracts with existing clients in this space but by being on site and having that presence 
Now, if something goes wrong, there's a lot of ad hoc work, which is generally at a higher margin because you've got your fixed cost base already paid for. So, you know, the near slow mightn't be the same as we move into the future, but I wouldn't be worried by that. The platform we now have means a lot of the stuff we will win and the margin accretion we will gain will be by being there. Um, and that's something that's, I know, is a, a particular focus for, um, for David Williamson and, and the team um, of, of Asset Services. We secured a five-year contract for Begarba, our Aboriginal joint venture for scaffolding services with FNG in the period, something we're particularly um, proud of, and it's one that we think there's great scope to keep, keep growing that business, not only with Fortescue, but with other clients um, as well. And I won't talk too much about photos, but if, you, if you're a bit curious about the top one there, I can categorically tell you it's not a fighter jet. It's, it's the nose of a wind farm, but um, it, that does look like a pretty cool photo. We move to slide 17, you know, the mining services business, which is production, drill and blast and specialist. Geotech and everything we do from a mining service production based uh, under long-term contract. Again, you can see the quality of the client base. It's all production related, as I said, but I think if there's a key takeaway, it's the quality of the commodities on which we play. And we play almost exclusively in gold and iron ore, good, good stable commodities that are growing. We do nothing in coal. Uh, and certainly you know, for us, our know, real focus is on quality clients and quality uh, commodities. So move to slide 18, you know, the first half in review, look at really, again, strong operational financial performance, you know, terrific asset utilisation in, in excess of 90%. And we're not a company that, you know, speculatively buys equipment and puts it on the fence. You know, it's very much around following, you know, clients, growing with them and, and really investing in kit as required um, for growth. A number of good contract wins and extensions, in, in the period, and look, and I've already mentioned our commodity, um, key commodity exposure. But I think if there's a key takeaway um, from this slide, it's really an innovation focus. So a lot of good, smart things we're doing around automation, but in particular, it's um, Orbix, our proprietary data intelligence um, software. This is something we've invested a lot, a lot in, and I think it's one that, and what Orbix is, it's predictive intelligence. It, it allows good decision making not only for ourselves, but also for our clients. And look, why that's particularly important is this makes us very sticky. Now, obviously, it's integrated into our client's system. It makes us very sticky, and it really keeps us ahead of the games, being the most sought after in sort of developing that in-house type technology and systems. And look, I will probably segue for a moment um, on that technology piece. Well, a lot of companies sort of talk about, well, you know, we're now going to be a technology company, et cetera. I mean, for, for us, we see technology and, and Orbix is clear evidence as enablers for us to sort of maintain that most sought after position and make us very sticky with our clients. And in all our businesses, um, there's great evidence of technology and systems and innovation that we bring to the table, be it visual mock-ups in facades, data monitoring technology in our civil and engineering business, you know, virtual reality training in our asset services business, some of the data systems we've brought in um, in asset services. You know, we could easily call ourselves we're a technology company now, we've got a technology arm, but we just see it as, as an enabler. We like to keep things pretty real um, at SRG Global, and it, it's that enabling piece that allows that engineering-led mindset of SRG to not only keep us ahead of the pack, but to allow us to grow and be sticky with our clients um, as we move into the future. Sorry I've segued a bit on mining, but I do get a little bit passionate about that uh, at times. I think from a mining services perspective, you know, whilst we've had some really good um, recent wins, you know, there is further growth um, we expect. I mean, we're certainly seeing the quality of clients we have, that their, their growth plans, we will grow with them. Again, not necessarily announceable events, but the long-term contracts we have, we will naturally get growth with our clients because of that. And look, we'll be very disciplined in the way we invest our capital and very targeted both from a client perspective and also from a commodity um, perspective. Our third operating segment is construction on slide 19, which is our civil and engineering business. That's our dam, bridge and tank um, business and our specialist building business. We're a, a national leader from a curtain wall facade construction perspective and our structures business here in the West. Now, from a client perspective, you can see they're very much government clients in that civil and engineering space, you know, particularly in that water and transport infrastructure space, you know, from a building perspective, very much key long-term partners such as multiplex, lend, lease, and build. If we move into slide 19, you know, construction in review, you know, civil and engineering, you know, strong first half, 
look, a really good pipeline of government opportunities in that dam bridge and tank space. And I think what, you know, a lot of discussion around what's shovel ready, and I think what we're now starting to see is more visibility and certainty in terms of what shovel ready really is. And we think perhaps more the second half of this calendar year will really start to, to kick in in our fields of, of expertise. Really pleased to report we achieved a high bridge and road accreditation um, in the period, and that will open up larger infrastructure opportunities for us in our own right, and particularly the more trend to alliance style work, it really fits in the breadbasket of what we uh, of what we do. Experience high demand for our SRG engineered products with excellent um, growth opportunities globally, and I will touch on this for a moment. So we've we've got a developing business called SRG um, products. These are engineered products; they're not screws or nuts or, or bolts. They're very much um, engineered products we've designed with smarts either in house or we've worked with global um, engineering products partners or technology partners to bring stuff into the Australian market. Um, and why I like this business, and we, we see this over time as becoming the fourth operating arm of SRG Global. And I like products, you make it, you sell it, you get paid. It's, you know, it's very recurring, it's a lower risk profile. And with the platform where you now have from a geography, client and industry perspective, the whole engineering products angle will really feed into those sectors, clients and geographies. And it's one that you know, we're, we're particularly excited about where we can take this arm of the business moving into the future and look in time in the leadership phase of that strategy, it will ultimately become the fourth operating segment of the group. From a specialist building perspective, you know, again, solely focused on key repeat clients. And I will touch on that from because that is a really important point. These are key repeat clients that we've had long-term relationships with. That's important from an operational perspective, but more importantly from a commercial relationship perspective where you know, 25 plus year relationships into the managing um, managing projects and managing commercials. And in some ways, we're almost agnostic as to the type of structure, if it's a hospital or school, um, a commercial development, a hotel, a car park, a shopping centre, we're almost agnostic. It's more following our deep key repeat clients such as Multiplex and Lendlease. Really good performance nationally in facades in the period and structures in the West. Now, probably facades had a little bit of an impact for um, of COVID, um, particularly in New South Wales and Victoria in the period, but that's you know, something that we you know, certainly is now starting to, uh, to turn around. Really good work in hand, terrific pipeline of opportunities. I was really pleased that we, we've now entered the defence sector um, for this particular business. It's a new market for SRG. It really further diversifies our sectors. Um, and opportunities, a lot of investment coming up in that space. It can be quite difficult to get in, but once you're in, um, it really opens up good opportunities. And whilst I said I wouldn't talk too much about photos in, in slides, I will just touch on for a moment um, Elizabeth Key. It's something that you know we're particularly proud of. There's not a structure there that we haven't been involved in um, in um, building and developing. And there's a number of structures we're developing there in that precinct to date. And there's more slated for that um, for that particular precinct. And I think by the time Elizabeth Keys concluded in about four year, four to five years time, there might be anything that we won't have been involved in um, in that particular precinct. And what it does give us is really clear visibility for our structures business in the West and our facades business in the West work uh, over the next three, four, five year period. And I think if there's one or two key takeaways from construction, it's it's world class value engineering in what we do, um, but we're going to be very targeted on, on where we play. I always like to link back to strategy in terms of where we're taking the business moving forward. And we move to slide 22. And it's about building the most sought after business in what we do. Now, we're very much in the growth phase of that strategy of what is a very clear strategy. Now, we'll keep doing what we said we, um, we will do into the future. Over time, that growth phase will morph into the leadership phase of the strategy and almost become one. And look, probably the key elements of the leadership phase to highlight is certainly the, the growth domestically and internationally in engineered products, which I touched on earlier. Yeah, there will be selective strategic acquisitions to complement our, either our capability or our footprint. And you know, probably the key areas of focus are asset services, um, particularly on the East Coast of Australia and potentially internationally, along with our engineered um, products um, business as well. And probably the other point I will highlight in the leadership phase, and you can see that we will continue to, to further transition um, towards annuity-based um, earnings to sort of that sort of 80, 20% um, range. We move to slide 23, we're not stopping here. 
you know, we have a really good, strong platform for continued growth, terrific work in hand, which I mentioned earlier in the presentation, a great pipeline of opportunities, and I think a really good history and track record of conversion, which you've seen. Uh, but what I probably will say, and I touched on this a little bit earlier, is the opportunity for us is leveraging existing contracts, cross-selling other parts of the SRG business and really getting that ad, ad hoc work as well. And the, what we've seen in industry is they very much want to deal with less players that do more, and, and that means the SRG value proposition is a strong one. And you're seeing clear evidence of that in the, in the growth in our client base, but the quality of, of those clients as well which is a good segue into our outlook, which is a positive one. Uh, from an operating perspective, asset services deliver step change growth in diverse sectors with blue chip clients, and you'll see evidence of that. Mining services operating in high demand, high quality growth commodities, you're seeing evidence of that. Construction are being positively linked to government infrastructure stimulus programs, you're seeing evidence of that. And our engineered products business is gaining momentum both domestically um, and internationally. And whilst I don't split it out, our engineering products business for FY22 is almost at the, at the full year number for FY2021 20, in terms of the growth and the momentum that it's building. From an overall business outlook perspective, you know, I'm pleased, as I mentioned earlier, we are upgrading guidance to 54 to 57 million, which will give our shareholders um, confidence on, on, on where we think the business is headed. We've got a really robust financial position, which I've touched on earlier. We'll keep transitioning this business um, further towards annuity earnings, which I've touched on, and we'll keep doing what we said we're going to do in terms of executing what is a very clear strategy which sets us up for long-term sustainable growth. But we've got significant organic growth opportunities in front of us over the next three to four years and multiple, multiple organic levers to grow this business into the future, which is why we're a good investment proposition, which is you know, why we're on this call on slide 25. Yeah. We have end-to-end -end asset life cycle capability as being the most sought after in our fields of expertise. We play in diverse market sectors and geographies. It gives us that natural hedge as different sectors, economies, or geography cycle, but also a very broad platform on which to apply our skills. A high level of annuity earnings, which you know, in time will attract um, much higher multiples. We're a highly scalable business with multiple organic levers to grow this business, but that's underpinned by an executive management board and systems that are ex experienced and ready um, to be a much larger business than we are today. We're a capital light investment profile, which I think is particularly important to note because that allows us to be both a growth stock, but also a good dividend paying stock throwing off good yields. I again really want to acknowledge our people. I'm really proud to be a part of this group, proud to be a part of the SRG family. You know, the, the work that they've done, not only in this period, but over the last couple of years has been, uh, has been terrific. And I think it's a really exciting um, exciting time ahead. I think I also want to acknowledge our shareholders for their support as we stick through um, and, and deliver against this strategy. I think it's also an exciting time for shareholders as well. I'm not, I'm not a financial advisor, but I think there's no better time to invest um, in SRG Global in terms of where we're going. So we think we're just getting started on where we want to be, and there's real momentum in this business, and we're, we're well on the way to becoming the company that I know we can be. Thank you. Great. Thank you, David. Um, the, um, so I guess we'll throw the questions now and I'll, I'll try to play as, as good a moderator as I can, Dave, in this and there's a few questions that have, that have come through. So I think this, some of these we might have covered off before, but um, they're probably around the usual suspects of labour, border restrictions and cost escalations. Um, and the question was more around, I guess, how are you managing um, those elements, um, given a lot of commentary still exists in the market? I think in probably some ways the results sort of show the diversity of the business. There certainly there are pockets where there's a more heightened, um, a, a more heightened challenge, but the diversity of the business um, certainly helps. And I think to me, um, we've really largely weathered the storm and shown in the last couple of years we can really manage um, not only labour but COVID, um, COVID as well. And it's one that, you know, particularly now the Western Australian borders are opening up, that's going to really help us. And whilst you know, perhaps Omicron's going to come into WA more, I almost think it's going to be a nil-sum game in terms of um, Omicron coming in versus the benefit of the border being open. We'll probably net each other out, and probably you know, particularly in areas like New South Wales and Victoria, we've, we've largely experienced that um, already. And look, I think I mentioned earlier, you know, we've already shown that you know, we're an attractive um, employee proposition and, and are getting good 
good talent in. And uh, you know, from the cost perspective, and you know, all our contracts have rise and fall mechanisms in them. And you know, the lion's share of them are actually linked um, to the site mm-hmm. and, and the contract, which gives us that sort of protection against rising costs or inflation, which is becoming a bit more of a of a topic than. Um, Today and look, probably the only other comment I'll make around um, COVID is that I mean the, the the type of sectors we operate in are very disciplined. So the, so the kind of um, how regimented the, the approach is, it's, it's quite consistent with sort of how those disciplined sectors operate already today. And so look, it's largely it's something that you know, I wouldn't say it's you know, it's been an easy period in the last couple of years. And you know for me we've we've done an exceptionally good job against a difficult backdrop. But I'm I'm, I'm certain that as um, the world becomes more normalised, that our, our results will only improve just off the back of it being an easier operating environment than it has been in the last couple of years. Mm. Okay. Thanks, Dave. And I think this other one you kind of covered off in the presentation about contract wins um, coming up, but the question around the recent wins and whether there's, um, whether you see that there's um, opportunity for us to, to win more. I think we've announced nearly half a billion dollars of work in the last um, last few months, and look, you know, we plan to continue to grow. So, you know, there will be um, further contracts wins as we move into the future. And I think the great thing about our business, there will be further wins. Um, there'll be new contracts with existing clients, but there'll also be all that ad hoc work that we can leverage by being on site on, on, on a number of, you know, a lot more sites already. So it will come from all those four buckets, along with getting some of that overhead leverage that I touched on earlier in the in the presentation. Yeah. Okay, so there's a few more here. So I'll try to go through them as quick as I can. M and A, view on M and A. Look, certainly, you know, we plan to grow the business organically. There's, there's a lot of good organic growth over the next three to four years, but we will overlay that with inorganic opportunities that make sense for our business yeah. and, and make sense for shareholders. I think I touched on it a bit earlier in the presentation. Sort of, you know, the asset services area is one that you know there's potentially skills around, you know, perhaps more mechanical skills, maybe more. Um, development on the east coast of Australia and possible, possibly certain jurisdictions internationally and certainly engineered products is the other one where you know, we'll develop it in-house but I think the right products or, or, or um, you know, products or partners you know, we may look at in that area um, as well. So it, it will be a combination of both. Yeah. yeah. Um, international work, I think you touched on the opportunities in products as well internationally but just generally internationally. Well, that's, that's something that probably um, over the last couple of years, we really paired back given, yeah. given the pandemic, and I now more really see that as, an, as a medium-term play. I sort of don't, um, don't foresee anything meaningful um, internationally in the next uh, in the second half of this year, but it's certainly a medium-term play in FY23, FY24 as the, as the borders open up again and those opportunities present themselves um, to us. And, you know, funnily enough, in the period, I mean, we're now selling products into the UK, you know, products into New Zealand, you know, there's other things we're looking at from a product perspective in broader jurisdictions than that. So, you know, whilst we've probably from a, um, um, a services side, we've, we've paired back, you know, the products have probably gone the, the other way a bit. So, um, you know, that's something that it's certainly part of our medium term plan. It's, it's, it's one thing I like about our business is that there's, there's just multiple, multiple organic levers in terms of, um, of, of how we're going to grow this business into the future. Yeah, there's one here around the dividends, and uh, the comment was around. It's pleasing to see there's been um, um, uh, uh, an increase in dividends. Is there a set dividend policy, Ms. Um well, There's no set policy. We're probably traditionally around the fifty to sixty percent range. I think you know the first half you know, I think is a smidge higher than that. And given our really strong cash uh, performance and our sort of our, our outlook on the second half and beyond, you know, we uh, you know, both the board and I felt the confidence to um, to increase. Increased dividends, and you know, but I think fifty to sixty percent is a pretty good proxy for uh, for um, how, to, how to think about it without the, there being a set policy. Yeah, yeah. So I think um, there's one here around um, the swing factors in second half of FY22 in terms of guidance, and how do we think that translates to FY23? Yeah, well, I mean, it's a reasonably tight range, fifty-four to uh, fifty-four to fifty-seven. I think probably, you know, there's some factoring in there in terms of whether you know there's you know what sort of impact COVID plays um, in the in the second half, and we sort of think if, if it's um, a more meaningful impact, it's probably the lower end of the range, and if it's not, then you know it's probably uh, you know at, at, the, at the higher end of the of the range, and I think COVID is probably the biggest swing factor um, of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Couple of comments around cash, um, on good result in cash contribution to the capital reduction. 
um, prepayments is does that exist in the business and um, you know what's driving business margins. So I'll, I'll cover the first part if I think. Yeah, well, I'll let you eat them wrong. Yeah, thanks. Dan. I don't know if, <laughs> no free lunches. So yeah, so no, it has been a really good question. I don't think David's um, talked about it a number of times in the presentation, but you no, know, there certainly hasn't been um, any prepayments by way of. Um, contribution and that has really been a real concerted effort from the team to work through our contractual terms with our clients and work collaboratively with them to ensure that we do get our payment milestones tightened up and making sure that we don't have you know big carrying amounts and width um, on our books and then and to ensure that that constant um, working through with our clients happens on a on a constant basis and, and as we all know how cash uh, evolves to become payments is that you need to work through your claims through your certifications through your through to your payment regime on a very regular basis. So I think, you know, to David's point, we have, um, as a business, I feel, really um, enhanced not just our um, our understanding of how cash flows, but just in terms of just that working relationship with our clients in cash as well. So that's, that's been good. Do you want to touch on the margins aspect, then? Yeah, some of the questions around driving increased margin construction and confidence in this trend continue. I think, to me, when I touched on this at the start of the at the start of the presentation, we exited some non-core businesses in the first half of last year in the construction space, being structures in Victoria and the in the Middle East. And, and really what you're seeing here is us really sticking to the things that we're good at um, with key repeat key repeat clients. And we, and we think that that will continue, um, continue to grow. Probably been, I think in some ways, particularly in civil engineering, uh, maybe a little bit conservative in terms of just wanting to sort of keep out, you know, mm -hmm. to, to really be quite... Um, quite targeted and, uh, and and focused, and you know, one thing that we, you know, one of our key um, parts of our DNA is the engineering skill set um, that we have, and the sort of shovel ready nature of the East Coast infrastructure has probably been a little bit slower, and I think um, COVID's had some impact of that, so we've probably carried some engineering costs um, through this phase, and I think will be leveraged as we further as we move into um, into FY23. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Dan. Um, question on engineered products. A um, bit more detail around that, please, as a potential fourth business segment. Um, and do you have an idea of you know what the real opportunity uh, size is for us in that? Yeah, well, something. I mean, today was really just introducing. Yeah. You know, the engineered products as a business that we've been develop developing is certainly a part of our strategy. I don't want to spend too much time on it. On it um, today, it's one that um, you know it will ultimately become a fourth operating segment. Over, over time, I'm not talking about that's not going to be in the next 12 to 12 to 18 months. We'll keep building that yeah. business link from a revenue perspective. It's, it's less than five. Um, it's, it's less than five yeah. percent of the um, of the current business. But you know, where, where it's where we're really getting great traction is with government government clients in that major infrastructure yeah. space. You know, bridges, dams, wind farms, yeah. um, certainly in the um, in the building construction yeah. space with all the key multiplex land yeah. lease. Um, and the like, and you know, we're certainly also in the mining space yeah. um, as well. So it's it's quite a broad platform yeah. um, for us, and it's one that really good quality clients and really good sectors that we've got established relationships in, and, and for clients we've got established relationships with um, as well. And probably the difference for for products is it can go to any client. Yes. Um, whereas probably have a look at say construction, for example, where you're, you're trying to win the the, the project. Yourself, it's kind of you win or you lose. Whereas products, you're really you're feeding to the entire in, entire market. So look, I won't spend any more time than that yeah. um, today. But you know, products businesses are generally high margin businesses and, and attract very different multiples. And it's one that you know, we'll keep building over time. And you know, I'll, I'll keep communicating with the market mm. uh, over the next um, period just to sort of continue to build that awareness about where we're mm. where we're taking um, that business. But really, today was just a sort of little bit of an entree to sort of yeah. you know, take us into the next phase because you know one thing that we've really focused on as a company is big, is to ensure that our business is really easy to understand i think mm -hmm. we've done a terrific job in terms of becoming quite a simple business to understand simple but very technical and smart but have a very clear strategy that's clear and easy to understand and, mm -hmm. and the reason why i'm raising products now is as we move into the next evolution of our strategy it's well understood well ahead of time mm -hmm. in terms of where in terms of where we're going so um yeah that's probably the extent of it terrific and a really hard one just an all easy one to finish off on multiples <laughs> um i know you hate, but someone's asked a question again sorry dave um so where do you think we currently value from an EV or EV multiple perspective and 
where do you think, um, you know, what upside do you think we've got? Well, no one's ever had an ugly baby, have they? So uh, <laughs> I think from a multiple perspective, I mean, we're, um, you know, from an EV EBITDA perspective, we're, we're cheaper today than we've really ever been in my time in the business. And if you look at the um, the balance sheet you have, the growth trajectory we're on and where we're going with increased guidance, it shows the cost. We've got multiple organic levers um, to grow the business. And I, I think as the market understanding builds and just in terms of how we've transformed um, this company to, to the company that we are today, um, it, it will drive a re-rate. But I, I think at the end of the day, and I've I've, I've said this internally many times, is you know, got a lot of employees invested in the in the company, which I think is a real plus. Um, for shareholders, that the best thing we can do is focus on what we can control, and that's being a really good business, delivering good cash, delivering good um, profits, delivering for our clients and growing. And what we are is that, and um, we are a business that is absolutely delivering. And the investment market it will catch up in time, and then that's the business I want to be. We want to be humble, we want to keep delivering, and over time, you know, the market will realise that and they will reward us for it. Yeah. And and I think there's just one last one that's not in. I think we've got a call bits after this. So just in asset services, um, just can you give us a sense of just how big this business can potentially get? Look, it's going to grow um, both organically and and inorganically. So yeah. certainly where it is today is not where it will be yeah. in into the future. So yeah, you know, we expect it. You know that when I talk about step change growth in in asset services, that that will continue, yeah. and it will continue in steps, not in terms of you know smaller increments over time. I mean, it's, it's going to be a big um, a big part of, that, of our business. And look, I'll probably, you know, probably planning to give a further perhaps update on our more broader strategy over the coming over the coming period and it will make it quite clear in terms of where the different businesses are. But asset services is one that um, it'll, it'll grow both from revenue, but also just the opportunity to optimise margins further is there um, as we grow as well. So it's good to do that, Dave, as you call that the new clients that we that we've, we've had built up over the last yeah. two years or so. So that's uh, pretty significant. Yeah. So, okay, I think that's that's it for us. Thank you, everyone, for joining the call. Yeah, look, I really appreciate the, the support from our shareholders and our, and our people who I know will be on this call. And it's an exciting time ahead. And, look, we'll get back to work now and, and you know, we're aiming to deliver a really good second half, and which will set us up really well for what I think is going to be a very exciting FY23 as well. So thank you.